I'm Scott, and this is Great Scott Knitting Dyes Yarn. Um, this is episode 15, and in this I want to revisit a couple of concepts of dyeing yarn in your own home. The techniques that I will be showing in this episode, and really in all the episodes of my Dyes Yarn series, are based on dyeing protein-based fibers. That would be fiber like wool, alpaca, silk, things of that nature. It is, techniques or the things that I dye would not work on cotton or linen or plant-based fibers. They do need to be animal-based. The other thing you need is, of course, the dye, which I like to use food coloring because it's um, safe to use and easily accessible. And I don't have to get any extra uh, special equipment. Now, I could use, and at some point in the future, will use professional acid dyes. Those do, however, require a um, dedicated equipment like pans and utensils because the powders can be toxic. You also need to have. A respirator when dealing with acid dye powders that you don't need with food coloring. The other thing you need is the acid. Um, the acid I like to use most often is vinegar, which is you can just buy, buy at the grocery store. I also at times will use citric acid, which you can get usually around canning time, late summer, early fall. Um, but it's a little harder to find in your grocery stores at other times of the year. I also like to use a reusable zip tie um, that I got at a hardware store. So you can look around at your local hardware store to find reusable rubber or nylon zip ties. That, and you also need heat, which I'm going to be using my stove, but you could use the microwave or even do solar dyeing but that's really easier to do in the summer. Today I will be dyeing one skein of Superwash Sport Merino from Dyer Supplier. This is a 100% Superwash Merino wool. It's a two-ply yarn that is about 328 yards. I have set this yarn to soak in a a uh, bath of room temperature water with approximately two to three tablespoons of vinegar in probably eight cups of water. By soaking the pre-soaking the yarn, it allows that yarn to rehydrate or put a lot of liquid in the yarn, which makes it easier for the dye to penetrate and uh, bind to the yarn the acid being added also helps in that binding process. While my yarn is pre-soaking, I'm going to go ahead and mix up my dyes that I'm going to use today. The type of dye I'm using is Wilton's icing paste. So it is this very thick, um, type of paste that's highly concentrated color. Now I'm trying to go for less intense colors than I have done in the past. So these aren't going to be super saturated. So I'm taking just a very little bit of that coloring paste and adding it to about one or two, it looks like two cups of water. Now, because this is a paste, it takes a little bit of time for it to dissolve. I am using warm water to help in that process, but it does take a, a bit of stirring. Now, the first color I have mixed here is just um, yellow, a basic yellow color. The next color I'm going to mix is called copper, which is sort of a orangish brown color. Oh, and just kind of to test out the the color on some a paper towel. And it also is a way for me to wipe off my measuring spoon. Let's 
So this is going to look sort of a coppery color, um, somewhat orange in nature, but not a bright orange, more, a, a bit darker in its coloration. So a, a, probably a bit more red to it. And you can kind of see what that will look like. Let me actually get an actual good drop of that. And the final color I'm going to use is Kelly Green. Um, this Kelly Green will be relatively highly pigmented, so I really don't need very much at all to get um, a good amount of color. Right now with my dyes mixed, I am ready to move on to the stove and talk a little bit about the technique I'm going to be using today. So on the stove, um, I have just a, a relatively deep, large frying pan, and in it I have about two cups of my pre-soak water. And I'm just arranging my yarn in here in sort of this zigzag pattern. Um, because I'm just using this 100 gram skein, I don't need um, a large pan to work in. Um, yeah, I'm just going to add a little bit more of the pre-soaked liquid. The technique I'm going to be using today is basically going to be a layering technique of these three colors, starting with the lightest and going to the darkest. I am going to go ahead and heat up this, uh, the yarn before I start applying the dye. So we'll wait for this to get nice and warm. Now that my yarn is good and steamy, I'm going to turn down the heat and go ahead and apply the first color, which is the yellow dye. And I'm just going to randomly just pour it on. This is um, a full two cups of additional liquid that I'm adding. Um, I'm not going to move the yarn around at all. Um, I am looking for a very tonal, very uneven color. So I'm just going to cover it and let this steam for about 20 minutes. With my 20 minutes up, I'm going to check to see if the yarn or if the color has been absorbed. And I'm not seeing very much color, if any at all, in the dye bath. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the skein of yarn. And ooh, that's very hot to the touch. I'm going to rearrange it in the pan for the second color, exposing as much of the. You know what? I think it'll be easier to dump out the water that's here because I am going to be adding another two cups and. My pan will not handle another two cups of water. 
So I'm going to remove it all and then add two cups back in of this still hot water. and then continue my dyeing process after I've arranged my yarn. So now I can rearrange my yarn. And I think I'll use, yeah, I'm gonna use my tongs because it is just too hot to touch. And I do want to arrange it in such a way that I can get to as a lot of that white or undyed yarn on the surface. And so this next color I'm going to go for is that copper, that coppery orange color. And I'm just going to, again, pour this over the yarn and try and catch most of those white sections, but again, fairly random. And so now I'm going to cover it and let it heat back up to a simmer and uh, absorb this color for 15 to 20 minutes. So it's been about 20 more minutes and do my quick color, color test and I'm not seeing any color left in our dye pot. So again, I'm going to remove this skein of yarn and place it over here in a bowl. Now, as this was, as this color was setting, I had a change of heart in regards to that green that I'm going to be adding. And what I did was I diluted it greatly and then toned down the brightness of it with a little bit of brown food coloring. So it now has more of a foresty green color as opposed to that bright green. And as I said, I also diluted it probably uh, in half, if not more, so that it wouldn't be quite so such a strong uh, color. And I'm just having to reattach my zip tie because it came off. And, all right, here we go. I'm going to go ahead and rearrange my yarn in the pan. And again, the yarn is still very warm to the touch. And so to these two layers of color, I'm going to simply add my green. and let it absorb this color for the next 15 to 20 minutes. Okay, my third layer, my green layer of color has absorbed, but I am going to just double check my 
color and it's all gone. It's all absorbed. Um, it is still a very bright color um, on this yarn. And for me, I'm not, I'm not feeling it yet. Um, I'm gonna take a moment and rearrange it back in the pan and consider my options for completing what I what feels to me unfinished. So what I think I'm going to do is add some additional brown food coloring to my yarn to tone down what feels to me just a bit too much brightness. Um, that was one cup, maybe two cups, and now I'm going to add just a little bit more to just help balance out and tone down some of these colors overall. Now, the amount of dye that I used was one drop to about one, I think it was one drop to two cups of water. So it's not a strong solution. I'm gonna let this set for about 20 minutes and we'll come back. All right, my pan has completely cooled. And as you can tell, it is a lot more subtle than it was before which is much more to my liking. Before it looked just a little bit too melony, like a melon, and this is a bit more uh, subdued and warmer to me. Um, so now I'm going to go ahead and rinse it in some cool tap water. Actually, the yarn is still a bit on the warm side, so I'm going to cool it down slowly using some warm tap water and then cool it down into a, the colder tap water. The rinsing will help get rid of the acid and also check for the color fastness. There is just a hint of color coming out and it could just simply be from uh, just the residual dyes that didn't take up into the yarn but for the most part it is um, it's not bad For the next step, I'm going to add just um, a small amount of clear dish soap. And um, this will help rinse out any additional dye that has not uh, adhered and taken up into the yarn, and also um, get rid of that uh, vinegary smell and vinegar um, out of the yarn. And usually if there's going to be bleeding, a significant bleeding, this will um, start that process. Um, I'm not seeing anything more significant than I saw with just the plain tap water. So I'm just going to continue to rinse this um, until the water runs clear and, um, and to rinse all of the residual soap out. I'll hang it to dry and then we'll look at the final skein of yarn. So here is our final skein of yarn, uh, nice and dry. And I really do like how it has turned out. Um, it is a very much a non-repeating colorway with those warmer oranges, those some still some bright yellows in it. And those muted green tones help add a bit of um, a fall feel kind of a late fall feel, um, especially here in Kansas, where you can still have some uh, subtly green grass, but lots and lots of oranges and yellows of the 
the dried leaves and dried grasses around. Um, it's very reminiscent of uh, late November, December kind of Kansas feel. Here's what it looks like all skeined up. Again, those brown tones help has have helped tone down the brightness and have, at least for me, evened out the color on this skein of yarn. It is definitely less pigmented and bright than I have often dyed in the past. Um, at first, I was not really enamored with the colors on this skein, even though I picked them. Um, but having toned it down, I am really liking it. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of me dyeing a skein of yarn with food coloring. And I hope that it inspires you to try your hand at, as, hand at it as well. It's really a lot of fun. It's really easy. And you get some really great looking yarn in the end. If you do like this episode, be sure and click the thumbs up to like this video. And if you enjoy the content on this channel, click the subscribe button. You can also click the little bell icon to be notified when I upload new content so you'll never miss anything that I do. Again, I hope you enjoy this time with uh, watching me die and come back for more. Go out and try some time.